Hi, I'm Mike Maloney, and welcome to another CSRM podcast. Today's episode is hosted by Dr. Greg Linville. Hi, welcome back to another CSRM podcast. Today I'm joined by Vernon Wint. And uh, Vernon, welcome to the CSRM podcast. Thank you. Glad to be here. Now, give us a little bit of of your background, you and I were introduced by one of CSRM's Overwhelming Victory Press board members, one of our editorial board members, um, Dr. Steve, got us together, and and we've uh, we've communicated a few times now about some things that we share a heart on. But bring people up to date on your journey. You, how did you end up where you are today, and and where are you at? All right. Uh, that's a long, long question. But uh, yes, yeah, so I, well, I, I was I grew up uh, very active in sports and basketball was my love. Um, and uh, that's uh, my mom, of course, I was raised in a good old Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod at home. I'm very pious and devotional. Give me sports devotional booklets along the way. And um, I try to remember the first um, real book that really applied to faith. Ah, I, I try to remember the um if I can remember correctly, I, I, it's in my dissertation, but, uh, you know, challenged all the time with applying Christianity to sports in uh, my so-called basketball career that didn't turn out the way I had hoped it would. <laughs> Wasn't as good as I thought I was. And uh, I actually, uh, long story short, I, I switched schools. Um, I didn't get along with my high school coach and uh, switched to uh, Christian high school, which was uh Kind of a mistake um, on my part, looking hindsight, because uh, actually Catholic Central is recruiting me in Grand Rapids. Um, but I got cut and uh, was so embarrassed to come back to. I went back to East Grand Rapids and um, they actually we were, we were vying for the state championship uh, both years. We had uh, uh, some really good players. Uh, Gar Thompson was a D1 player, played for Michigan. Uh, Jimmy Borland, um, some people have played, uh, out, you know, signing ball. But um, I was a pretty good shooter and ball handler, but um uh, the the wind was taking on my sails at that time, and I uh, am kind of apologetic to my high school classmates. We just celebrated our 40th anniversary high school, and they were always wondering what happened to me. And I kind of went into a shell because I was so hurt and so embarrassed um, by my basketball career that I put so much so much of my identity was involved in basketball. And uh, out of that, I became a coach and. Um, I was pre-med at Hope College. I, I ran it and played ball. They were trying to get me to play ball. I, I don't think I could. I'm not sure if I had the athleticism to even compete at Hope College. They had a really good team at that time. Uh, the girl was almost buying for the D3 championship and always flying Dutchman and high hotel guys. But I was a pretty good shooter during cross country. But uh, I ended up coaching at Taylor University basketball camp, um, which I grew up going to. Um, I think we mentioned Don Odell's venture sure. for victory team sure. uh, going overseas. And, he has a big influence on my uh, my Christianity and my basketball career. And, and uh, during that time, uh, my three brothers are physicians. My dad is a retired physician, and uh, I was on the track to be a doctor. And I got the call to go into the pastoral ministry. Uh, but I've always used sports uh, throughout my lifetime of, as a platform for the gospel. And during my time of writing my dissertation, uh, I was wondering what should I write on. And uh, I started reading sports books in my spare time. And this is, I said, this is perfect. So uh, I offered it to my um, the, the dissertation team and they kind of questioned what I was doing. And I got all this material. In fact, I had to back up some material. And the challenge that I was given by one of the books, uh, Cheryl Hoffman, you probably know who he is. Um, sure. You don't really have a grace based approach to sports. So this is what uh, I believe I was offering or trying to attempt to offer my dissertation. Um, uh, we have, uh, uh, if, if I get into theological terms, I'll, I don't want to offend anybody, but you have a, a Calvinist approach where you're kind of predestined to be good. You're, you're, you got the athletic ability. You can't teach height or quickness, as Red Auerbach would say. And then, uh, so you're either predestined to uh, be greatness or not. And then you have the uh, Armenian viewpoint that you got to 
make a decision and decide to be a good athlete. And so I was kind of uh, using a Lutheran approach that we cannot make a decision by the Holy Spirit to call us by the gospel. And God wants all to be saved. Uh, uh, predestination to hell is a horrible doctrine. And we think it's the worst doctrine of all. So Calvin is our favorite heresy, no offense to people. But so I, I, I use that as our kind of a guideline of, I, I have a, a model of Minkowski onion diagram. I don't know if you're familiar with that or not, but it's a way of looking at layers of culture. And if you have a God... Uh, your ultimate allegiance to a God that only uh, predestines people, some to hell, some to heaven, or a God that only accepts you based on your decision or your works, uh, it automatically results in a God of, of uh, a meritocracy, uh, if you carry that out in the sports culture. So I was trying to attempt to offer a God that offers acceptance by God's grace through faith in Christ alone. And that's, uh, I guess, what i and using a different consultant at different schools in North America. And uh, but again, I, I, I love my my Christian brothers, so I'm not trying to pat myself on the back. They were, were just a, a different approach that I've been been able to privilege to offer to different schools. Yes, and, and I think those that are watching or listening in, uh, they're gonna say, Oh, I, now I know why Doc Linville wanted this guy on. Uh, because we, <laughs> we share a lot of those things, uh, not the least of which is what uh when you say about your own basketball experience, uh, very similar in, in my realm, and that basketball really was the the driving force for a lot of what I did coming up through high school. And yes, people have to take it by faith now that I was a three sport letterman in high school too. Uh, but those things all are some of what makes us who we are today. You and I and others like us, exactly. and and. Those of us that have been down that path, where it be basketball or cricket or American football or world football or whatever you might want to do, we always come across how do we integrate that faith and sport? And and I, I the the great book by uh, Tony Ladd and, and uh, uh, Jim Matheson, those two have written about muscular Christianity, and they talked about mm -hmm. that there is a a step series of steps that people go through and that, you know, at first you don't have it at all, the, the integration of faith and sport. And then you come to this place where you, you do embrace it, but then you run into some issues or some problems in trying to reconcile. And so you might walk away from it again. And so mm -hmm. they call it, you know, the connect and disconnect. And that, in a theory way, is what all of us are doing. And so, therefore, what the local church that's trying to do their sports rec and fitness, they're trying to help people find their way down that road of reconciling and integrating their faith in sport. And you, you've done that personally. Feel free to speak more about that. But sure. also, well, but also yeah. feel free to speak about it, how you're doing that corporately within the Missouri Synod Lutheran denomination mm -hmm. and also maybe some of your schools that are doing the sports and some of your churches that are doing that. I mean, take it where you will here. Bert. Sure. Just well, take it. Well, this is a, this is kind of thank you for uh, asking that, because, uh, you know, Steve Waller is the one that connected me with you. I didn't I didn't I didn't know you till. I read all about you and how uh, I love what you've done in the, in the sports. And I've, I've been privileged. I've not even near what you've done in that area, but I, I've done a lot of work and research and speak uh, speeches, um, sharing my testimony and uh, working with kids and uh, bringing that joy to sports that sometimes um, we miss out. It's kind of like the joy of our salvation. We miss that out. Sometimes we, we take it for granted sometimes. And I try to instill that with our kids. I had a little girl that was, at our basketball camp the other week, she shot 30 shots and we're trying to make one shot and she finally made it. And, uh, keep yeah. on trying. It was this, you, yeah, and, uh, uh, so, um, I guess I, I, I actually, in hindsight, my mom said I should have been a genius if I would have spent all my time, you know, studying instead of <laughs> basketball court. But, uh, the rewards that I have received was friendships and colleagues and yes. memories. Have, yes. uh, I mean, God has blessed me in that area. Uh, even today, I can go out and play ball at the park here at Lake Group Park and uh, 
you still have it uh, by God's grace. I can still, I was hit by a car in Los Angeles, but I'm, I'm older now. I'll be 58 in November, but I can still shoot the lights out by God's grace. I'm not as good as sugar. That's another, the best year I've ever seen it. Another, it's a book I did on Melvin Laughlin, but I, I, as a kid said, it can't, you still have it. And uh, that's a, a gift that God has given me as a platform to share the gospel with others. And um, again, it's still a joy of the, the sports, whether they're D1 athletes, D3 athletes, or little kids, just what a gift that God has given us in uh, sports. And um, don't want to make it a, a, a and, and to carry that joy off the court to or off the playing field. Uh, if I instill the God's grace, and I, I like what you said when we were in conversation, we always want to lift up the cross to Christ. But if you really want to know what God is like, look to the cross. Right. And if you start there, you can't go wrong. That's and, right. And that's what I want to you know, instill in our, our athletes, uh, even if they're not even faith, you know, have much of a faith. I said, well, this, this is the God that loves you. And um, he, he wants, he knows everything about you. He knows you know, you want to succeed on the playing floor and you want to succeed off the playing floor and all the things going on in your life, uh, especially college students, they all juggling all these different balls in the air. And uh, just that that balance. I think we we um, have a, a tendency as Christians, a, a, I'm a pastor, uh, we have a tendency to uh, swing a pendulum from, uh, you know, I'm, 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 I'm righteous. I, I'm, thank God I'm not those people up there to despair. And we want to have that balance that, that Christ is right there with us and um, forgives us uh, when we're repentant. Of course, we can't live in unrepentant sin, but uh, that grace is always there. That's what I want to bring to sports and life in general. So there may be some folks that are listening today that are not familiar with the Missouri Synod Lutherans. Uh, <laughs> tell us, tell us your distinctions and, and sure. why you are, are have been convinced that that is the denomination to serve in. Right. Well, I, I grew up LCMS, but I, I grew up in Dutch Reformed Territory, Grand Rapids, Michigan, West Michigan. And, and sure. College and, sure. Uh, appreciate my Dutch Reformed friends and uh, the parachurch, you know, Baker and Zanderman and all the, the parachurch. I've uh, uh, been involved in F FCA, Athletes in Action. So I, I know the, uh, the wonderful people that are involved in those ministries. Uh, going back to the, the Missouri Synod, of course, uh, takes its name from Luther, Martin Luther. Right. Um, and uh, we believe, as I was explaining to some of our parents the other day, that uh, the Lutheran Church didn't split off from the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church had already split off from the early church uh, with its different teachings. So Luther was just trying to bring back to the early church, uh, wasn't trying to create a, a different church. And uh, I guess the distinctions that uh, you may be aware of is uh, we're saved by God's grace alone. Of course, that's most churches believe that, but we um, don't go beyond scripture. So uh, we, it's uh, very frustrating sometimes to be a Lutheran because uh, we just say, we put our hand in our mouth like Job did and said, I can't go beyond that. God wants all to be saved. Yes, some are not saved. Um, uh, we can't choose our salvation. God is called us by the gospel. Uh, yeah, we can reject our salvation so that there's a there's a, a, a logic that sometimes is frustrating for people that come out of a Calvinist background or a Minion background when the logic is, well, you got to make a decision or not make a decision or God predestined some or predestined others. Uh, same with our sacraments. Um, we, uh, of course, we believe in baptism regeneration, but it's got to be nourished always to replace the circumcision. Um, there's, a, there's not a lot of... Uh, uh, a better object lesson, in our opinion, than infant baptism when a baby goes nothing to the table at all. And, and uh, this is God's means of grace. Um, so I know some people would agree about that, but that's well, a, a baptism has to be continued daily. Um, and this number is that, well, I've been baptized, I don't need, but it's something that's nourished daily through word and sacrament. And um, the Lord's Supper, too, that's something that we believe is truly body of the blood of Christ. And uh, offered under the means of bread and wine. So it's, um, I guess, some distinctions. And I know people get frustrated to the LCMS because we we are faithful to Scripture, but we're not quite in anybody's camp sometimes. So <laughs> I appreciate that. And um, I think that some people know well about it and others don't, but we'd encourage you to, to go online and look some stuff up. But tell us more specifically, you are... 
engaged as a pastor within this denomination? What are you doing? Where are you at? Yeah, it's a good question. Well, I've, I've had the privilege, actually, of serving predominantly non-Lutheran contexts. And so that's uh, where God has called me. That makes me appreciate even more uh, sometimes our, our theology. And again, I'm not trying to pat us on the back because we're, we can be pharisaical, too. Uh, and uh, we want to recognize that we just had a death one of our members, her mom died, and they said she's Christian. That's that's the most important thing. We're not trying to say that only Lutherans go to heaven. We're trying to be faithful to the scripture. And that's our, uh, we're not fundamentalists. We want to, every teaching is important in God's word. And uh, so if you invite you, want to look at our website, we have the lcms.org website, if you want any questions about that. But I think the hallmark that we bring to a church, uh, we started out as a truth movement back in Luther. I think that's uh, one of the highlights of our church body is that uh, we are trying to get the word out and get the word straight. And your specific role right now, what are you doing? Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm actually I'm overseeing a church in uh, Lexington, Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. And um, it's right off I-75 and Manowar Boulevard, if you know Lexington that well. And uh, trying to revitalize that church. It's a smaller church right now. We're about 30 or 40 right now. And uh, we just had about 50 last Sunday. We're getting some new members come in by God's grace. Uh, as, as Luther once said, uh, how the Reformation happened, I, I drank beer and preached the word. <laughs> the Holy Spirit <laughs> did the rest. Uh, so <laughs> we move the power of the word. And uh, so the Holy Spirit is working among us by God's grace. And then I'm planning a church in one of the fastest growing communities in America, Richmond, Kentucky, just 23 miles south. Uh, Eastern Kentucky University is uh, uh, the main university here in uh, Richmond, the Colonels. And I've not done a lot of sports chaplaincy ministry so far. I've met um, some of the athletes on campus and just kind of get a creative process ministry there right now. Well, very good. We're, we're winding down our time on, on this segment. We're going to come back again on another one. Um, and I wanted to have you listeners or, or watchers be a little familiar with uh, Vernon and, and also a little bit of what he's doing. And you've got an introduction to some of his thinking at this point um, and how he's begun to process this integration of faith and sport and even from a theological perspective. So we're going to go a little bit more into that. But I would encourage you, the stuff that will come up on the screen if you're watching, or you can go to the CSRM website and get the contact information for Vernon and also for the Missouri Senate. Mm -hmm. And we have had, just for those who would need to know this, we've had Missouri Senate Lutherans on our board for CSRM. And we, we just welcome anyone from that persuasion to get involved. And those that know us know that we're, we're across the board, all three uh, traditional Christian traditions and, just all kinds of different uh, Protestant denominations. And so we're, we're glad for this connection. And where we're going to go next time is we're going to talk a little bit more about how we integrate faith and sport and how Vernon's doing this and maybe some of how the Missouri Synod Lutheran churches are doing this. And we're hoping that what will come out of this is that you as a local church sports minister will learn a little bit be challenged maybe a little bit on how you can begin to in your programs in your church or maybe you're in a school uh, that you'll be able to figure out how to approach these kind of topics so we'll talk a little bit more about that next time and as always uh, we'll talk maybe about a couple books and vernon's written some books and we'll want to hear about that as well so thanks for joining us today. And Vernon, thank you for being with us. We'll look forward to seeing you uh, in the I next know, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. The CSRM Podcast is a production of CSRM and their production house, Overwhelming Victory. Dr. Greg Linville is the executive producer and Scott Stedman is the associate producer and editor. To learn more about CSRM, visit csrm.org. For more information about Overwhelming Victory, visit overwhelmingvictory.org. The CSRM Podcast is the flagship member of the podcast network Overwhelming Victory Radio. For more information on Overwhelming Victory Radio or to listen to our partner podcasts, visit overwhelmingvictory.org backslash OV Radio.
For CSRM Podcasts, I'm Mike Maloney. Have a blessed day.